From what this new world could mean to whether it's one we'll colonize, join me as we explore the potential super-Earth found orbiting Proxima Centauri, our neighboring star. Let's start at the beginning of all this, shall we? When it comes to exploring space, there are many goals that astronomers and astrologers try to accomplish. One of the basic ones is just to learn more about the universe as a whole, trying to fill in the pieces of the puzzle that is the cosmos, and especially in the most recent of years, we've been doing a good job of finding things big and small across the stars, including finding some new things in our very own solar system. But the other main goal that has taken up a lot of our time is the search for planets that could not just house life, but also be a potential colony point for humanity should the need and technology arise. We've looked across the stars and have found many planets that could be what we are looking for, but in terms of immediate evacuation, the best contender that we have is in the Alpha Centauri system. We've talked about this star and its planets before, but to give you the gist of it, there is a star within the system we call Proxima Centauri. It's a red dwarf star that is smaller than our sun, and it also emits less heat than the sun we have. As we started to observe this system, we found a planet we call Proxima Centauri b. This planet was within the habitable zone of the star, and given what we know about it so far, it could just be the planet that we go to in order to live amongst the stars in more than one place. In fact, many sci-fi stories have used the Alpha Centauri system as a place where a colony has been formed, including the recent Netflix reboot of Lost in Space. Anyway, a lot of research has gone into not just studying Proxima Centauri b, but also trying to find ways to get there in a quicker amount of time. You see, Proxima Centauri is 4.2 light years away from Earth. That may not sound like a lot, but at our best speeds, it'd take tens of thousands of years depending on the craft we used and whether we'd be going at top speeds of the best craft that we have. Obviously not a good option. There are initiatives to try and get there faster, including Breakthrough Starshot, but whether it works or not is very much up in the air. However, while we are still trying to figure out how we get to Proxima Centauri b, we're still studying the planet and the system itself to see how much information can be found about it, including whether we can indeed live there. As this research was going on in 2019, a signal suddenly reached Earth that hinted at something we didn't know about before. There's a third planet near Proxima Centauri. We are pleased to show for you the first time what is for us a new candidate planet around Proxima that we call Proxima C. Mario Damaso of Italy's Observatory of Turin initially announced during the 2019 Breakthrough Discuss Conference. A paper describing the potential planet appears today in the journal Science Advances. It's only a candidate, Damaso continued. This is very important to underline. Why do they say it's only a candidate? That would be because we can't definitively confirm that it is a planet. We know that something else is orbiting the star known as Proxima Centauri, but that doesn't mean it's definitively a planet. Because of the system itself, our distance from it, and our own technology at the moment, there is some margin for error as to what it could be. I know that may sound a bit pessimistic, but think about it like this. If we were able to map everything so well, why didn't we know about this sooner? I mean, we've known about Proxima Centauri and Proxima Centauri b for some time now, right? So how could we not know about this potential extra planet? Star mapping is not an exact science despite what people would love to tell you. And as others who have confirmed the strange signal near the star will tell you, the system may hold many more surprises. Even the closest planetary system to us may retain interesting surprises, said Fabio Del Sordo in an email. Study author and postdoctoral researcher in the Department of Physics at the University of Crete. Proxima Centauri hosts a planetary system that is much more complex than we knew and we do not know how many unknown features are waiting to be discovered. So let's assume that this is indeed a planet. What do we know about it based on the information we have gotten from these signals? Well, first and foremost, the planet is huge. It's what we call a super-Earth, or a planet that could be Earth-like in potentia, but it is so massive that it breaks the scales. In the case of the now dubbed Proxima C, the planet is roughly at six times the size of Earth. To be clear, that is a big planet. However, the reason it's dubbed a super-Earth and not compared to certain other planets is that though it's bigger than Earth, 
it's not as big as Uranus and Neptune, the two planets in our solar system more immediately bigger than Earth. Anyway, the question then becomes, if this is a planet and it is something we could live on, should we live on it? While it wouldn't be impossible to live on the planet, Proxima b still remains the best candidate. Why is that? Because while Proxima b lives in the habitable zone where water could form without evaporating immediately due to the sun's rays, Proxima c lives outside what we call the snow line of the star. Basically, if you're near the snow line or beyond it, any water you could have turns to ice. And indeed, the position of Proxima c and estimates based on its size prove that it's either a snow planet or potentially an ice planet. Again, because it's still a candidate for being a planet, we don't know for sure. The problem, though, is that the location of Proxima c, approximately, is causing some serious confusion on how snowline planets form in regards to certain kinds of stars, like the red dwarf that it orbits around. The formation of a super-Earth well beyond the snowline challenges formation models, according to which the snowline is a sweet spot for the accretion of super-Earths due to the accumulation of icy solids at that location, said Mario Damaso, study author and postdoctoral researcher at Italy's National Institute for Astrophysics. Or it suggests that the protoplanetary disk was much warmer than usually thought. In general, there's nothing preventing the existence of Proxima c there where we spot it, but the formation and evolutionary history is a subject worthy of deeper investigation. Or in layman's terms, we don't fully get how Proxima c is existing where it potentially is based on what we know about solar systems forming, which believe it or not is something that happens to us quite a bit, especially in recent years. The universe still has plenty of things we don't understand. But let's get back on topic. Even with Proxima c likely being a planet that we can't build a colony on, more than likely, that doesn't mean that it's a planet we just ignore. After all, we just mentioned that it is a planet that could potentially lead to further explanations of how certain systems form. Plus, if it is a planet, then that would help redefine our galaxy. Proxima Centauri is the nearest star to the Sun, and this detection would make it the closest multi-planetary system to us, Del Sordo said. So even if it doesn't have global impact in terms of it being a place we can settle, it does have importance in helping redefining the systems near us and how we look at them. And technically, if Proxima c is out there, and is a planet, that could mean a Proxima d or e. You never know what might just be out there in the stars. Before we dive deeper into the Proxima Centauri system, be sure to like our video and subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Now hearing all of this about how we somehow found Proxima Centauri c may have you wondering why is it so strange that we found it? That's because most exoplanets, planets that are outside our own solar system, discovered so far have been glimpsed via the transit method. That is, they're detected because they lie edge onto our line of sight to their host stars, and astronomers can detect a minute dip in the host star's light when the planet crosses in front of it. No such dip in brightness has been seen for Proxima Centauri. Instead, to find this star's planets, astronomers have had to use a second planet hunting technique called the radial velocity method. Radial velocity refers to a slight wobble in the star's motion as seen from Earth, caused by the gravity of unseen planets tugging on it. This is how Proxima Centauri b was found and now seemingly Proxima Centauri c. This detection method helped determine things about Proxima Centauri c that we couldn't learn from other methods. For example, while Proxima Centauri b orbits its star in about 11.2 Earth days, Proxima Centauri c orbits its star every 5.2 Earth years, which greatly helps show why we couldn't find out about it in the usual methods. Speaking of usual methods, there are telescopes coming out soon that will possibly be able to give us a better look at Proxima Centauri c. Usually these kinds of planets are too far away to look at, or they're in such proximity to their stars that they have a glare to them that just makes them look like a giant ball of light. However, the distance that Centauri c has Proxima Centauri itself is so far that it's out of the range of the glare. Proxima c could become a prime target for follow-up and characterization with next-generation direct imaging instrumentation due to the large maximum angular separation of one arc second from the parent star. The candidate planet represents a challenge for the models of super-Earth formation and evolution. Furthermore, there is a plan to make a 3D model map of the galaxy, 
and using the formation we have, it could further help paint a picture of what Proxima Centauri C could be and what it would mean if it is a planet. What does that mean? Well, as you hopefully know, planets have a way of affecting things. And even if it isn't a place we can just go and live in, it is a place we can study and see how it affects the system around it. Not unlike how Jupiter and Mars help keep a massive asteroid belt in place, or Neptune locks down the Kelper asteroid belt, and so on and so forth. All of which could be vital in truly determining if Alpha Centauri B is a place we can go and colonize one day. Don't we know if it's able to be colonized or not? Well, yes and no. On one hand, we do know the location of Proxima Centauri B, and we know that the distance from the Sun puts the planet in the habitable zone where water could exist, but there's a problem. You see, while Proxima Centauri B is only 1.3 times the size of Earth, which makes it not too much bigger overall and takes just 11.2 days to go around the Sun, which means we'll have a lot of years if we live there, the real problem is the star itself. As noted, it's a red dwarf star, and that means that the Sun has certain pros and cons, including dimmer light and heat compared to our yellow dwarf Sun that we know and love. Now, because of distance, a lot of those issues are solved, but Proxima Centauri has been known to have solar flares, massive bursts of heat and radiation that can decimate planets. And these kinds of flares are known to destroy atmospheres. And if Proxima Centauri B doesn't have an atmosphere or an incredibly thin atmosphere, then there's no way we can live there. For reference on this, look to Mars. Mars has an atmosphere, but it's incredibly thin due to various factors over its lifetime. This means that its atmosphere doesn't have the gases we need to breathe, not to mention the atmosphere has a hole that opens up every few years and drains what little water vapor and gases have been stored up. Plus, because of proximity to the star, that would mean that we'd be exposing ourselves to potential radiation levels that are far beyond what we have to deal with here on Earth. And if that is true, and the atmosphere and magnetosphere isn't there to protect the planet, forget water being around. No life could survive there without severe protection. I know this all sounds grim, but this is the reality of trying to find another Earth amongst the stars with the technology that we have. We can only do so much from our position, and we have to make guesses, estimates, and more to determine whether something is feasible or not. Could we live in the Alpha Centauri system one day? Sure, but it's going to take a while, and a lot more research to see what else may be lying in wait in the system should we get there. Thanks for watching everyone. What do you think about Proxima Centauri C? Do you think that this new planet could give us some answers on the Alpha Centauri system? Do you think that its sister planet could be where we end up one day? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the channel.